So Andy Grove decide, defines inflection points as an event that changes the way we think and act. There are few skills as powerful as understanding when things change. The problem is you don't get to wait until you know. If you wait until you know, it's already in the price. That's why human beings suck, it's a technical term, at investing. Human beings do two things really, really well. We buy what we wish we would have bought, and we are spectacular at it. Everybody piled into crypto in November of 21, literally at 69,000. They were piling in. And then it goes down 74%, goes on sale, and everybody runs out of the freaking store. Investing is the only business, the only one, when things go on sale, people run out of the store. You put wedding dresses on sale, women will kill each other to get in the store. Why do we run out of the store in investing? Because we're human. And then we compound it. We sell what we're about to need. Here's a crazy stat. Over the last 20 years, if you, bought and sold, if you just bought and held stocks, you made almost 9% compounded for 20 years. If you just bought and held bonds, you made almost 6%. You know what the average investor made over the last 20 years? 2.9. Because they're idiots. All you had to do is pick one or pick 50-50. But no, they bought stocks when they went up, sold them when they went down, they bought bonds when they went up. The long bond is down 50%. Long treasuries are down 50% in the last year. People were piling in when interest rates were close to zero, because we're human. So inflection points require a response to innovation. If you don't act, you die. If you're wrong, you die. But most companies actually don't die because they're wrong. They die because they don't commit. They fritter away their valuable resource while attempting to make a decision. The greatest danger is in standing still. I tweeted this out this weekend. Winners lose more than losers. Winners lose all the time because they're not afraid of losing. Right? They focus on the next play. They don't care if they miss the last shot. Michael Jordan missed 9,671 shots. He says he doesn't even remember taking them. The average player, the bad player, obsesses about losing. They're so paralyzed that they might make a mistake, they don't do anything. That's why companies die. So if you can be an early investor, if you can embrace innovation, if you can believe in things, these people said, we're gonna string copper wire across this nation, and people are going to talk to each other. People say, you're fucking out of your mind. You can't talk through copper wire. You can't send signals through copper wire. If you invested, you made 11,000%. That's a lot. Okay? But people didn't. And I love the thing on the right. This is from 1907. This is us today, staring at a screen, not at each other. He's reading race results and he's pissed off because he lost money. And she's reading an amorous message. She's scrolling Instagram. That's from over 100 years ago, predicting wireless inattention to each other and physical people. So as technology evolves, the incumbents always dismiss it. The telephone has too many shortcomings to be seriously considered as a means of communication. Who said that? The founder of the telegraph company. Duh. Okay, the Americans might have need of a telephone, but we do not. We have plenty of messenger boys. Really? Really? We're not going to use a telephone because we're going to send a kid on a bike with a message. Wrong. Okay? Henry Ford's lawyer said, Hank, do not invest in cars. What they want is a faster horse. Hank didn't take that advice, and he built the largest car company in the world at the time, and he put out a business. The largest car company in 1903 was the American Electric Vehicle Corp. Elon did not invent electric cars. Please stop with the fanboy stuff with Elon. I mean, we had electric cars in 1903. There were no gas-powered cars. 
They were all electric. They got about 46 miles to a charge, which is pretty freaking good for 1903. Okay? And Hank came along, and he had this design for this Model T, and it was going to run on grain alcohol. He was from the Midwest, and he was going to cook up some grain alcohol. And his friend, John D. Rockefeller, said, you know, Hank, I have this stuff. I make lamp oil, kerosene, from this black stuff that comes out of the ground. And I have this leftover, and I just I shove it out the back, and it goes down the river. And the river just keeps catching on fire. And it's bad for my image. So I'll give you that. We call it gasoline. And you can put it in your cars, because it'll burn. And that's why we run on gasoline for the last 100 plus years. right?" And those guys made a lot of money owning each other's stock. Now, back in 1949, everyone knew. By the way, when everyone knows something, nobody knows nothing, right? When everybody knows, okay, that's what Mark Twain says. Not what we know that gets us in trouble. I mean, so it's not what we don't know that gets us in trouble. It's what we know that just ain't so. So, calculator like the ENIAC, the first computer, okay, the ENIAC, uh, weighed. Eight, weighed, had 18,000 vacuum tubes and weighed 30 tons. Computers in the future may only have 1,000 vacuum tubes and weigh one and a half tons. Everybody hold up their phone. You are freaking strong. There should be a show here for you. You're, weighing, you're picking up one and a half tons. And by the way, that computer in your hand is more powerful than NASA's first computer. In your hand. I love this. Anyone think Charles Darwin, smart guy? I mean, I'm a biology and chemistry guy. I think he's a pretty smart guy. One machine will suffice to solve all the problems for every country. So you need about 100 computers. There are more than 100 computers in the world today, it turns out. When things are called a fad, buy lots of it. If it rots your brain, buy even more. If your parents, old people like me, say it's bad for you, buy a lot. Right? Slide rule, as good as a calculator. Battery doesn't run out. I've traveled the length and breadth of this great country, talked with all the best people. I can assure you that data processing is a fad that won't last the year. ADP, automated data processing, it's not even a good company. And it's done three times better than the S&P. It's not even a really good company. Data processing is kind of here to stay. You guys are here about data, right? Something I've been hearing people talk about data all day. Incumbents always misjudge innovation because they become incumbents, right? They were the disruptors. Like, theoretically and technically, television may be feasible, but commercially and financially, it's an impossibility. Who said that? The father of radio. Of course he said that. Television won't be able to hold any market after it captures the first six months. People will get tired of staring at a plywood box. Really? Anyone watch television in the last 48 hours? Or stare at your screen? Like, I dare you, pull up your screen time. I dare you, right now. Okay? So, I love this one. Digital Equipment Corp. Computing Titan. First, 70,000 of venture capital in 1957 turned into billions. Amazing. Ken said there's no reason any individual should have a computer in their home. 20 years later, he's bought by a personal computer company. I love that part. Love that part. Now, innovation and disruption are driven by long cycle forces. So we've been a republic for about 247 years. The first half, from the 1790s to the 1920s. It was about turning human muscle into mechanical power. Right? We found oil. One of the greatest inventions of all time. This idea that we're going to stop using oil is just so stupid. It makes me crazy. Because a barrel of oil, a single barrel of oil, contains 40 human years of labor. Turns out we didn't need slaves after that. That's actually what was the biggest trigger. And we came up with all these ways to mechanize things. We replaced horses with automobiles. That was better. Mechanized power. But now, we're in the second half, where we're turning brain power into artificial intelligence, cognition. Okay? And we've been through five epics, right? from steel and railways to steel, I'm sorry, steam and railways to electricity 
the age of oil, information and technology. We're about to enter this next epic, and you're all part of it. This may be the most important slide of the day. Um, there's this site that's been going on since the 1950s, and I lived it. My dad sold and installed mainframe computers. Mainframe was founded in 1954. 14 years later, there's a little uh, innovation, shall we say, down in Silicon Valley around this thing called the microchip. And suddenly, the center of the universe shifted from Boston to Palo Alto. 14 years later, where I grew up in Seattle, uh, there's a little innovation around this thing called the personal computer. Most of my friends don't, don't work anymore. They were smart enough to go to work for that little company called Microsoft. I wasn't that smart. I defend myself. I say, look at the picture of the original Microsoft 11. You wouldn't blame me. I should make fun of them. They're multi-billionaires, and I'm not, but it's a funny picture. I mean, we all looked bad in the 70s. They look really bad. Um, Bill Gates' glasses are like this big. I mean, it's crazy. But Steve Ballmer's mom famously told him, honey, why would you work for that company? No one would ever want a computer in their house. Quoting the deck guy, right? He has 18 billion reasons he was right, mom was wrong. 14 years later, why is it always 14 years? Why is the cycle always 14 years? Because young people create everything cool. Because they don't know what they don't know. They're not afraid to try. So young people, and it's about a half generation, 14 years, invent everything cool. So this guy, Mark Andreessen, 19 years old, invented this little thing called the browser, made the internet possible. So then 14 years later, there's this thing around the mobile net. And back in 90, 96, we, I was working at the uh, Mile and Moderate Notre Dame, and we invested uh, a lot in innovation, and we invested in venture capital. And, we invested with this firm that no one had ever heard of at the time called Sequoia. Now everybody knows Sequoia. Michael Moritz was a new partner. He'd never done a deal. His second deal was this company called Google. And I remember our board saying, that's just stupid. It's a number 21 search engine. What do we, you know, we got 20 search engines. What do we need another one for? They, they're not a search engine. You know what Google actually is? You know what they do? It's amazing. You know, there's 1.7 billion web pages in the world. There was one in 1991, okay? Ken, Tim Berners-Lee wrote the first web page. It's 1.7 billion. Google owns half of them. Every time you ask a question, they've already got all the answers for that question on a web page. And it just directs you to that web page. That's what indexation is. And if, you've, if there's a new question, if it's actually a novel question, they'll create a new website. So they reinvented something that wasn't search. It was a better way to do business. Then the mobile net came along in 2010. I remember being back in Seattle at Craig McCaw's house. His family office had a meeting. And um, I remember asking him, do you think the mobile net is going to be big as the internet? He's like, Mark, are you kidding me? Ask me if they want a computer. Like, whatever. Ask me if they want a phone. They already got two. I got two phones right over there. So yeah, it'll be bigger. Mobile net, bigger. So now we're on the verge of the sixth epic, the blockchain era. And blockchain, it's, it's so big that it's even hard for me to get overly, I'm a hyperbolic personality, I'm pretty enthusiastic. I can't get excited enough for you about how big this is. And it's because of math, which we'll get to in a second. So everything happens faster. You can see on you know, the blue line on, on this uh, right-hand chart, indoor plumbing is almost 100% after 120 years. North Carolina still has a few places where we don't have it. Um, everything happens faster. Look at podcasting and Amazon Prime. It's just straight vertical. Everything happens faster. Because math, now look, this is an incredible chart crime. Right? Any long-term graph has to be on log scale. This is not, it's a, it's a, I shouldn't even show it. It's a horrible chart crime. But I like the acceleration of the growth. Because the acceleration is, in the last 100 years, OK, starts at 1,400 over there. In the last 100 years, right, we've gone from no cars to self-driven cars, driverless cars, from no movies to 3D movies, from no microprocessors to three-dimensional processors. So it's big. And it's because of math. Right? When I was growing up in Seattle, I could listen to WGN radio. It's unbelievable. How the heck could I listen to it? Because they had a big old giant antenna. And this guy Sarnoff said, anyone who can hear that signal is a node. And therefore, it's a linear relationship. And networks grow linearly. 
like, oh yeah, that sounds good. We'll give you, give you a, a nod for that, Sarnoff's Law. Then Metcalf came along and said, uh-uh. Everyone who can hear that signal also has a connection. So an exponential growth. Now, the reason exponential growth matters is because, I said humans stink at investing, but you're also really bad at math. Two times two, four, good. 23 times 17. I'll wait. That's proven to be the limit of human, human uh, intelligence. You need a calculator to do that. And how about if I ask you a nonlinear regression? Probably not very good at that. So exponential growth is all about the power of compounding. And then Reed came along and said, no, it's even better than that. Because within the exponential growth of the network, there can be sub-networks that increase the connections. Like in this room, there's some people play golf, some people play tennis, some people play pickleball, and invented where I grew up in Seattle, and was dormant for 30 years, and now it's like everywhere, right? People are blowing out their Achilles and tearing their ACL to play the stupid game. Um, that's actually a fun game. So, but I have a fourth one, and, and I named, named it after a friend of mine. Um, I'm actually wearing socks kind of in their honor for on-chain monkeys. Uh, so I got my Rise socks on today. But uh, Sophia Vachetto, we were talking one day about this, and I said, no, there's a, there's a fourth dimension. Those pipes aren't the same width. Some are really fat, some are really skinny, some are really active, some are inactive. So there should be a fourth law, we'll call it Vachetto's law, that gets us to the, how fast networks can really scale. Now, why do networks matter? Because in the old days, if you wanted to be a big company, you had to control property, plant, and equipment. Today, you want to control networks. Networks are the most valuable thing in the world because costs grow linearly, profits grow exponentially, and exponential growth is the most powerful force in the universe. These are the five most valuable companies in the world, except they're not companies. They don't make stuff, right? What does Amazon make? Amazon makes nothing. They're a search engine that matches buyers and sellers, and they take a massive cut. A friend of mine bought a little company called Rock Laces. So if you're a runner, you know about this thing, you slice down your laces, so you don't have to, uh, if you do marathons and stuff, I mean, not triathlons, you don't have to tie your shoelaces. So I want to sell on Amazon. I'm like, fine, we get 45% of the revenues. He's like, baloney, no way. Tried doing it on his own, he sells on Amazon, pays them 45% of revenues, but his sales grew 10x. It's an amazing business, but it is not a company with property, plant, and equipment. Now they have to have some warehouses and stuff now, but Bottom line, they don't make stuff. They're a network. Same thing with Apple, right? They make little phones, but that's not where they make their money. They make their phone on the network effect because when there was just one phone, it wasn't very valuable. Now there's 10 billion connected phones. Pretty valuable. So tech evolves slowly. Remember Pets.com? Anyone remember that company? It's the poster child for the stupidest idea of the internet. Chewy.com is the same damn business. It's worth $20 billion. It's the same company. It does the same thing. It just took time for the maturation or the evolution of the technology. We needed broadband. We needed GPS tracking. We needed you know, a phone in our hand. Like I've ordered a plane ticket sitting at a traffic light. I know I shouldn't do that, but I mean, I've actually done it. That's how easy e-commerce has become. You didn't be able to used to do that. You have to go to a travel agent and go to their physical place and sit and wait. It was horrible. Now dog food comes to my house, cat food comes to my house, I don't have to worry about it. So welcome to the digital age. Every company is being disrupted. The largest transportation company in the world owns no cars. The largest hospitality company, which is not the MGM, owns no properties. Airbnb owns, owns no properties. They're the largest hospitality company in the world. All digital, virtual. So if you're going to invest in inflection points, it's going to point you to digital assets. Exponential growth. I defy everyone in this room tonight to do this. Take a piece of paper. And I challenge you, especially you guys, because you all think you're buff, fold the piece of paper eight times. Okay? Can't do it. And everyone says, I could do it. Can't. 
Try. Go ahead. Try. If you could fold it 20, it's the size of this building. If you could fold it 30, it's the atmosphere. If you could fold it 50, it's the sun. If you could do it 100, it's the known universe. In the next 50 years, technological progress will increase one quadrillion x. That's a shit pot full of zeros. A quadrillion x. Just let that hang for a second. Usually I, I talk about a trillion. See, nobody shudders when I use the T word. I'm going to lock the doors and make you sit here with me for 31,710 years, which I promise you would be very unpleasant. Probably unpleasant already. And you have to spend a dollar a second. That's one trillion. I'm talking more than that. A quadrillion, 12 zeros. Okay, it's a lot. So.